this week on Kirfatu. Uh, our change is a model, and I would say that encourage everybody to hold on to that uh, model in terms of having a transition government of 22 years peacefully in a very transition and very peaceful way. It's not you don't see it everywhere and you don't hear it everywhere. Despite the limited resources in government, we have had a tremendous progress in terms of the Constitutional Review Commission is ongoing and we are very hope hopeful. Now we also have the Land Reform Commission. The commission has been launched but is yet to be operational and I can assure you it's because of uh, limited resources. You have the TRRC, which is of course a landmark and people are ensuring that we know we want peace and we want reconciliation but there must be justice. So when we see, for example, a scenario where certain people who are in the same category as others are being uh, handed certain punishment and others have been allowed to, co to continue to serve in the government mm -hmm. without having to face the same kind of punishment that has been meted out on their mates, mm -hmm. what would be your opinion on that? Would that be a success of mm -hmm. that particular reform or otherwise? I would have expected that the, the, the recommendations made by the Commission be implemented to the letter and the spirit. That is my professional point of view. What was the reason of your removal? Did you know, it must have been something serious. For yeah. somebody like you, your statue, mm -hmm. the role you played, mm -hmm. to, to, to just be removed like that. I know. Um, for me, at the beginning, I never knew why I was removed. But it was important for me to know why I was removed. Yeah. And um, I went to the president and in our conversation. What he said is that um, he removed me because he, I had written a letter to the UN um, and signing it acting president. And that, that was unconstitutional and it was undiplomatic. That was the advice he got from his present minister of foreign affairs and the former vice president, Usenu Dabo. Dr. Tangara and Dr. Tangara and Usenu Dabo. But the, 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 the crux of the matter was that the foreign minister, Dr. Tangara, Mumodu Tangara, had an issue with me. The, what is the issue? We had traveled to America with $32,000 for two weeks. Commission on the Status of Women. And uh, before we, before the... By this time, what was Tangara's position? He was Tangara the was, the, he was the he was at the UN. In the UN. Yeah. Okay. So we trans, my permanent secretary and the accountant general transferred money to their account, $32,000, for my two weeks accommodation, uh, transportation, and also... Um, logistics, I mean uh, logistics and administrative support. So when I came after one week, mm -hmm. I decided to, I told my permanent secretary that she should ensure that the monies we spent for the week, we, I should know, so that the balance of the money will be sent back to the Gambia, to the treasury. Because I am one person that doesn't like a dime from anybody. And having stood for the change, for, change in governance, I don't expect myself to go with money and then come and not account for it. So when my permanent secretary went to him, he said to my permanent secretary that they had, he had spent $21,000 on vehicle rentals. I said, I told my permanent secretary, I said, he must be joking. Please tell him that I want that money back to the treasury. So in between, he came back to say that, well, he has gone to the rentals, we, uh, car owners, and the car owners say they, they are going to give us a discount of 5000 which means we should pay $18,000. I told my permanent secretary, does it, make a, does it make sense? So because of that, he took that to, to, to use it to victimize me, vendetta, personal vendetta, mm -hmm. to engage the, the, the president to say that, well, this woman is in a haste. They, they had gone to the point of making, making him, convincing him that I was in a haste for his position. 
because he also mentioned it somewhere and I heard it. So what you're saying is a very serious, serious. place. It is. Uh, so it we is. have a serving minister who could be accused of, of course, corruption. Of course. Are the relevant authorities of aware of this? Of course. I went to the president and I explained to him. Is it even wrong to sign as a <laughs> president? If you are in an active Why capacity, would the president yeah. believe them believe over yeah. you? Well, that is yeah. the question. Yes, they believe him. But for me, for me, I think it's just politics. Yeah. But why do you think the president believed them? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know this why is, he believed him. This is him. serious though. I don't know why he believed him. Today is the first time I have had the opportunity to say it. And I'm saying it. And I, can, I stand to be, he can challenge me. Anyway, it, the records are there. Did you feel betrayed though at that point? Yes, I felt betrayed. I felt betrayed. By whom specifically? I felt betrayed by the, the president. Uh, His Excellency Adama Barrow. This coalition government is our government. I will continue to support them 100% until we come 20, uh, 2021. That's the mandate of the coalition. Before 2016, mm -hmm. efforts have been made by political parties. Mm -hmm. uh, b during this time, you were not even on the, uh, the how would I say, it? you were not Lambert. on the scene. Yes. Um, those efforts have crumbled mm -hmm. as a result of competition mm -hmm. uh, among flag bearers mm -hmm. of the different parties. But when you came on board, mm -hmm. we have seen that it became successful. Mm -hmm. And many pe people credited that to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is the reason why we always see you as the face of the coalition. Mm -hmm. uh, so was there any time after the elections that it crosses your mind that this moment would arrive where we would have major stakeholders uh, not being as part and parcel of the coalition as they were before. Where did things start to fall apart? I've been working on the ground. I've been engaging youths, women, different people, opinion leaders, without even people knowing it. Because people, I don't, I'm not, I'm not supposed, I'm not doing it for, for name, for a name. I was working for my country. And when I realized so many years they have tried, the political parties have tried to become uh, into coalition. Mm -hmm. They couldn't agree because everybody wanted to be a president. Mm -hmm. And if you look around, all of them, most of them have been in leadership without any change for how many years. Is that democracy? That's not democracy. Mm -hmm. it's not. Nobody is indispensable. Democracy starts within the party. It starts so. within the party, internal mm -hmm. democracy, mm -hmm. before you go to community democracy, we go to social democracy. So I said, I need to get up now and gather myself and see how I can contribute. I have never claimed to be the architect of the coalition and I will never claim it. I'm a humble servant of God who wants to be part and parcel of whatever is good. And the little I know, the little I can, I will contribute. And those who are now trying to explain how the coalition came and claiming architecture, I have no time to waste, waste to dignify their, Trump, their, 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 their own aggrandizement. I have no time for that because I'm not in competition with anybody. In fact, yeah. yesterday, Halifa Salah at the National Assembly did say that you were co-opted in by Dembo Bojan, who he had asked to chair the coalition. It was Dembo who brought you in. Halifa has more so. I would have expected him to talk about more substantive issues. The, the substantive issue was for the National Assembly members to ask questions about the statement of His Excellency the President. Calling my name in Parliament when he is supposed to deal with Serkunda West and deal with national issues. I'm, I'm disappointed that he did that. I'm in no competition with Halifax Salah. He can continue his self-aggrandizement. For me, I'm a humble servant. I'm a Gambian. I have a right to stand up. And what I have done for the coalition, he cannot erase from the history books. When my country needed me, I was in the forefront. The argument is you abandoned the coalition mm -hmm. when you were in cabinet. Um, that is not right. Mm. When I was in government, I engage all the political leaders from time to time. I will call them to my office, including him, Mr. Ali Fasala. So in terms of membership, we have seen, for example, PDOIS, uh, UDP, 
and GMC distancing themselves from your recent activities. Uh, so if you say the coalition hasn't crumbled and we are seeing it from the outside that it has uh, torn apart uh, from early on since 2019, uh, what is your justification for saying that it hasn't you know, crumbled? Three parties, entities, living and organization doesn't mean it but has crumbled. They have the biggest democracy. Major stakeholders. They are uh, the major stakeholder here. Mm -hmm. We don't have a major stakeholder because all of them had 70, 70 delegates mm -hmm. for the convention. Yeah. And that is why we selected mm -hmm. His Excellency the flag bearer. If but if, if, if Barrow's government support. goes to five years, then it ceases to be a transitional government. It, it becomes is, a normal government. It is, it is a transitional, extended transitional government. And mm -hmm. it's, it's dependent on the social legitimacy that the council, I mean, the coalition has given him. And also, it's incumbent on the fact that the coalition is aligning to the constitution. The constitution takes precedence over every agreement in this land, in, in the world. That's universal. Mm -hmm. Now, when you campaign on a platform like the coalition agenda, mm -hmm. and you sold that idea to the people, mm -hmm. and it was based on that platform that they vote for you, that becomes your contract with the people. Mm -hmm. That is a social contract. Mm -hmm. So when you say social legitimacy, that's a different thing. Mm -hmm. But here is your social contract mm -hmm. with the people, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if that is for five years, that is your political mandate. If that mm -hmm. is uh, for three years, that is your political mandate. Mm -hmm. So the people, the constitution have given you a legal mandate of five years mm -hmm. and the people have given you a political mandate of three years. Mm -hmm. So if you must now renege on that promise, mm -hmm. it means you are violating your social contract mm -hmm. with the people. And if the people are the ones giving you political money, they can also take it away from you. Mm -hmm. That means if people now come, come up and say, we want you to serve for just three years, they are within their rights to do so, right? Mm -hmm. So what does it mean when you said the coalition have extended Barrow's mandate? Is it to say that we support Barrow when you want to serve for five years? Mm -hmm. Or is it to say that we have given you the mandate, therefore that's final? Mm -hmm. It's not final. From the point of governance, mm -hmm. we have extended his mandate and yeah. to give him the social legitimacy. But the people can still reject what your extension. What what now we have done our part. Mm -hmm. Now he is supposed to do his part. Of course, in, in concert with us. Mm -hmm. What we will do as a country, as a coalition, is to go back go to the people. Tell them this is what we have done, mm -hmm. this is why we have done it, and we need your understanding. Mm 